Welcome back, guys. Um, I got a pop filter as requested, so hopefully the audio is a bit better. Hey, Gusta Janice. I don't know how you even pronounce that. She's a slut. She's this pro-feminist blah, 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 blah. She's a good-looking girl, man. She's beautiful. But, dude, not worth it. Stay away from this girl. Stay away from this woman. She is dangerous to your health. Uh, basically, I spoke to a woman who had sexual relations with Myron Gaines. Let's fucking talk about it. I'm here to share her side of the story because we had our own little conversation. Okay, so she is Miss Cheeks on Twitter, Satanisha. It starts with a tweet that says, that man Myron Gaines. So let's take a peek at what this says. That man emotionally manipulates and coerces women into extremely rough and degrading sex. He does things that he knows women don't like. He gets on top of them and overpowers them. He pulls their hair and puts them in positions where it's not easy to stop him. Does that not sound extremely predatory to you? That sounds like a rapist to me. Let's keep going. It's hard to read. Once he gets on top of you, he's in control. He doesn't use condoms. He doesn't give the option. He will take advantage of you and your body. And if you're a person who panics when you can't get out of something, if your body shuts down and you can't move, if you go into mental shock, it's over for you. And there's actually a scientific term to talk about what she's talking about. This is called ego depletion. I'll explain what ego deplet depletion is. Like when someone is constantly pushing and pushing and asking you, hey, do you wanna have sex? Hey, do you wanna have sex? And you're like, no, 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 no. And then by the 20 or 30th time that someone asks you, your brain literally cannot even have the strength to say no for the simplest task because of ego depletion. You ask so many times, you've taken so much of my energy with this question that it's easier to just sit there and get it over with and continuously give up my energy and argue with you and say no, no, no for another 50 times. That's what ego depletion is. And this is really scary because... A lot of women do go into mental shock when shit like this hits the fan. When a woman is experiencing something extremely traumatic, it's like a deer in the headlights. Why is a deer stuck in the headlights? Because it's so in shock and it's so in fear, it can't move. That's exactly what happens during a lot of sexual assault and rapes, is a lot of people are in shock to do anything. And if you do something, you never know. They can pull out a knife and kill you because there's a lot of cases where men get rejected and they kill women as a result of rejection. So it's a very scary position for a lot of women to be in. He also says it's a woman's job to please a man during sex and to maintain a man after. No, the fuck it isn't. Sex is a thing between two people. It should be enjoyable between two people. It's not about pleasing the man. It's about pleasing one another. I don't know. Oh, he's so fucking disgusting. I. <laughs> so he will say shit like, I want to make you the star of the show. I want to help you make money. I want to boost your OnlyFans, get you more followers. I know how to help you make 100K real quick. I won't take any money from you. I care about you and I want to help you. Exhibit A of manipulation. That's how they get you and coerce you into doing things is by pretending like they give any sort of fuck about you. It's all lies. They're lying to get into your pants. So ladies, I beg of you to be extremely careful with the people that you decide to have sex with because it could be someone like this and you do not want that sort of energy in your body. He acts like he cares about you, asks about your life, holds your hand. He makes it seem like he is revealing deep, dark secrets by telling you his real name and what he used to do before the podcast. Once again, this is manipulation. You are making this person trust you because they feel like you're giving them information that you've never told anyone else so you feel special you feel trusted that builds a certain bond between two people when you share very intimate information like that but he definitely had an agenda of why he told her this information and it's because he wanted to give her a false sense of security like oh like i trust you like i care about you like it's obviously information that he's told everybody but you don't know that until it's too late exactly what I just said. He says it to everyone to make them feel special and to gain and earn their trust through manipulation. I will admit that after I felt like my body was taken advantage of, I stayed. I spent more time with him because he really made it seem like he gave a fuck. This is how a lot of women get sucked into really fucked up relationships. 
We slept together. I had to lay how he wanted me to. Even wanted to control how I looked. Tried to tell me what to wear when we went out, how my eyebrows looked, how my hair looked, as if I wasn't attractive enough the way I was. Y'all look up to this guy? Y'all look up to this guy. You don't see how fucking disgusting he treats women? And you know what else I fucking have to say? This is what I have to say. The first podcast that I ever posted, the ratio from dislikes to like is absolutely fucking absurd. It has like 900 dislikes and 100 likes because I decided to speak out against Fresh and Fit before Abba and Preach did. So obviously I got hella hate because as everyone who speaks out against these people do, that you get hated for it if you decide to speak out against them. So that's exactly what happened to me. I didn't really give a fuck. But the moment that I decided to do a reaction video to ABBA and Preach talking about Fresh and Fit, oh, now the like ratio is 1.4K to like 200 dislikes. So when a man starts talking poorly about Fresh and Fit, now everyone decides to fucking believe them. But when women have been doing it for months and years, no one listened to them and everyone attacked them. Do you guys see how fucked up this shit is? It's awful that... Two men had to be the ones to say something in order for people to start listening. So if you take anything from this, just know if you are a man, your words hold a lot more value to other men than women. Men are more likely to listen to other men. They don't like to listen to women. So please use that privilege to speak to your friends and educate them on important topics such as this one because they'll listen to you, but they won't listen to us most of the time. He told me that he potentially wanted more than sex with me, so I convinced myself that I misconstrued everything that happened. Sometimes he records his sex. He's not dumb. He keeps himself legally clear and asks permission to record. Okay, bare minimum, thank fucking God. But clout is a drug, and it's a drug that he uses to prey on women, and even women that don't give clout about clout. He finds a way. Saying here, clout is a drug, it really is, and he's using his fame and his money to coerce girls into having sex with him that's the only way he gets girls is by leveraging his platform and his money you walk in they hand you a drink and keep your cup full so you're easy to agitate and you're off the game very well said i don't understand why anyone would like to pregame before a podcast but that's what they do they offer all the girls drinks there's liquor everywhere um I didn't drink because I knew I was like, I want to be prepared for this podcast and I don't want to be taken about like, I don't want to be taken by surprise. And I also don't want to be emotionally triggered to the point where I'm screaming and yelling because what they're saying is fucked up shit. And if I'm under the influence, it's a lot easier for me to get agitated. So she's exactly right. She's exactly right. They don't drink before the podcast. You, when I got in the car, he pulled my hair and started kissing on my neck without my permission. This is some Harvey Weinstein type shit. You see how he's abusing his power to take advantage of women? And you know what? I also mentioned this in my first podcast. He is so obsessed with the idea of false accusations. That's all he fucking talks about. False accusations. I hate women. Like just degrading things about women. I wonder fucking why. When you're passionate about certain topics, it's because that topic has to do specifically with you, something you've experienced or something your loved one has experienced. And that's why you're very passionate about certain topics. He's very passionate about false accusations. So I'm assuming he's done something very fucking wrong that that's why he talks about those things. He's projecting, quite literally projecting. And here's the fucking proof that he is not gonna say the word, but we all know what we're thinking here, right? He's Harvey Weinstein. Just from my past experiences, I've learned not to say no to men because you never know if they're going to follow you, stalk you, harass you, or kill you. But also, I was attracted to him in a strange way that he was very nice to me. He was very sweet to me. Very true. A lot of women are fucking petrified of saying no to men because of the consequences we might face after. You say no to a guy, suddenly they don't fuck with you anymore. You're never going to hear from them again. Or they'll stalk you. Or they'll kill you. Or they'll talk shit about you. It's insane. Rejection is normal. Not everyone has to like you or want to have sex with you. It's totally okay. Here's where it gets fucking crazy. It's all a part of his game. And what makes matters worse, he created a life within me. He lied and told me that he was 99% sure he hadn't, but that I should take a plan B anyways. I didn't take one because they make me extremely sick. And if he was 99% sure, 
I didn't feel the need to. And now he's handling it like a complete asshole. I've been depressed for two weeks. I've left the house once. And now I'm in a new state city by myself and having to get an abortion alone. He says he'll be by my side for it, but I don't want that type of energy around me at all. Well, and I told him that I wasn't on birth control and he didn't give a fuck about any of that. <laughs> he refuses to wear condoms and then also refuses to take accountability for getting a woman pregnant. What the fuck? Ladies, if you're watching this and a man refuses to wear a condom, that's the first fucking red flag. You need to run as far as you can away from that guy. He is not a good person. He doesn't care about you or your health. And someone that doesn't care about you or your health does not deserve to have access to your body. Plan B, man. That shit fucking sucks. Do you know how awful it is when it's men that can impregnate 300 women every single year, but a woman can only get pregnant once? So who should we really be pointing fingers at to not get people pregnant. It should be men taking birth control, not women. That's a whole other conversation that I'll talk about another time. But it's crazy how us women have to take birth control and plan B, all this fucking medication that has insane amount of hormones in it that makes us depressed, anxious, throwing up, nauseous, awful. I was on birth control and it, that was the worst two years of my entire fucking life. Other than the fact that my boobs grew tremendously. That was the only plus. Only if I got an abortion, huh? If I did what you wanted me to, would you stay by my side? Alpha men don't try to avoid consequences this way. They don't play the victim when they get called out this way. Not him acting like the victim. Let's fucking see what this shit is about. If you got an abortion, I would stay by your side the whole time. Okay, bare minimum, as you fucking should. Okay, so this is what she said. She said, you have to, at some point, have a little bit of accountability in this. And you're literally blaming everything on me. Every sentence that comes out of my mouth starts with, what I'm doing instead of you. Myron says, I need to cool off. My heart is racing and my chest hurts. I have pre-hypertension. Let me cool off and I'll call you, please. <laughs> no, I'm controlling my emotions. My body is another story. Ugh, this fucking disgusting. How does he have the audacity to victimize himself? I need to cool off, like I need to. Bitch, you just impregnated a woman. She has a life growing inside of her. The only person that should be like, ah, is her. You're chilling. You don't have to go get an abortion. You don't have to go take plan B. You don't have to go get a surgical procedure that's extremely invasive and extremely debilitating. You don't have to. So you should be on your fucking knees, kissing her feet, saying, I am so sorry that I'm a fucking idiot. What can I do to make you feel comfortable? What can I do to make the situation better for you? And instead, I'm controlling my emotions, please, let me pull out, like, not a fucking man. This is a fucking pussy. Ugh. I want to address something here as well, because I've had a lot of comments being like, oh, you're cloud chasing, like, la la. Bitch, I was talking shit about Fresh and Fit before Abba and Preach were, okay? So, this isn't for fucking clout. If those men are allowed to have a platform and speak their shitty opinions, I'm allowed to create my own platform and debate those shitty opinions. It's not clout chasing. It's called making people be accountable for their actions. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Karma's a bitch and her name happens to also be Guste. And if you listen to them, I feel bad for you because you are quite literally being set up for failure. This advice is not advice. It's sexual assault is what he's telling you guys to do. I think waking up together naked wouldn't be too bad. This guy has no game. I'm reading this and I'm like, I want to throw up. I would not. No. Gross. Disgusting. Anyways, this girl is receiving so much fucking backlash because she spoke up. They're calling her a clout chaser. Why does a woman speaking out about her awful experience with a man have anything to do with clout chasing. You do understand that weak people stay silent and strong people use their voice because our voice is powerful and these men don't deserve a platform. So this is why she decided to speak out is to warn and help other girls not make the same mistake that she did. She's doing a great job. I'm so fucking proud of her. And if you're watching, I fucking love you. It takes so much balls and strength and bravery to come out on social media and say something like this. It's not easy. And you guys have to give credit where it's due because there's hella credit that's due here that's not being given correctly. 
she's being attacked people are talking about her abortion get the abortion it would be the mess the best move like where's your compassion where's your empathy she has to go through such a painful fucking experience because of this man and this man is doing absolutely jack shit to help her in any fucking way if anything he's making it worse for her and all fucking fresh and fits little sisterhood that's coming after her is making it Ugh, i hate that little sisterhood y'all are and she regrets speaking out she literally said she regretted speaking out and this is why women don't come forward this is why women stay silent it's because of dumbasses like these people who attack her and make her feel like shit and make her feel like a clout chaser and make her feel like garbage all because she decided to speak her truth publicly as anyone should and y'all wonder why 60 percent of rape cases aren't reported it's because of people like this why the fuck would anyone want to speak up if i'm going to be treated like this and i'm begging please no more women don't go on that podcast don't give them any more content don't give them the satisfaction of having women even there to some people i wasn't truthful or i'm not believable to me i told my truth and what i felt my truth and his truth may not meet they may not be the same especially if accountability isn't involved look at the way she's talking so eloquently so respectfully and look at the way myron talks which person are you going to trust the person screaming into microphones and manipulating women into having sex with him which by the way let's call that what it is that's rape manipulating a woman and coercing her into having sex with you is rape that's what it is why do you talk so much about false accusations when you're 230 times more likely to be raped as a man than to be falsely accused if you haven't been raped congratulations you're most likely not going to get falsely accused okay I said, I don't mind answering any questions you might have in regards to that. I'm here to help you if you need anything. Also here to remind you why you did the right thing because you are strong enough to speak out. A lot of women aren't. You are the voice of the silenced. I'm sure Myron has done a lot of fucked up things to women and they were too afraid to ever speak up. She said, I swear, um, I hear where you're coming from, but I should have stayed silent, LOL. People are misconstruing everything, butchering my character, LOL. It ain't worth it. I should have just aborted and shut up but I appreciate the love and support and the abortion advice. That breaks my heart. It really does break my heart. Like I, I, I genuinely wanna cry reading this. It takes so much strength for someone to come out with a story like this and the fact that she regrets speaking up because of the way people are like handling this. It, oh, I just wanna give her a fucking hug. Like I'm so sorry this is happening to you. Um, I also made sure that she was okay with me putting her name out here and me talking about her story. And I asked her, I said, if there's anything that you want me to make sure I cover in the podcast, let me know. And she said, I think the most important thing is I'm not trying to call him a rapist. I'm not trying to do anything except for hold him accountable for the way he made me feel. She's not calling him a rapist, but I will proudly say that I believe he is. So if you want to attack anyone, attack me. Leave this girl alone. Thank you. And the way that he handled the situation and the way that he uses what he rebukes women for going after to attempt to sway women mentally. I just feel like if as a man you just want to fuck, just say that and give a woman the option to say yes or no. But I think fear of being rejected or potentially not getting what you may want, no matter how many available women there are, makes men like him and the men who follow him resort to manipulative ways or say things that they think will deal the deal and i think that's unfair and she's a hundred percent right myron is so fucking scared of rejection and being told no that he has to manipulate women into having sex with him it's not genuine he fakes kindness he fakes being genuine he fakes being sweet and kind just so he can get in someone's pants Men wouldn't feel the need to manipulate or to lie or to make it seem like they want something more if they felt like they were truly going to get a yes. She's right on the dot. You wouldn't have to manipulate women if you were confident in your game to get women. You wouldn't feel the need to manipulate and lie to them. If you're such a high value man, if you're such an alpha, 
You don't need to manipulate women to get in their pants. It naturally comes to you. But clearly, you fucking suck as a person. Your personality is trash that you need to manipulate girls because you can't get them any other way. And that's fucking sad. It's so sexy when a man is straight up. If you just want to fuck, just say that. Just be like, I'm just here to fuck. And I'll be like, cool. Either me too or that's not what I'm looking for. That's the mature way to go about things. Before I decided to compose those tweets, I really sat and thought about it for a long time. And I asked myself, how do I know if he was being genuine or if it was all part of the manipulation? And what helped me come to my conclusion was that shit, when shit got really serious, all the sweetness changed. And it almost seemed as though he didn't want anything to do with the situation. He was supposed to meet and talk with me in person. And that got put off for a day. Then I got kind of put off the next day because he said he was busy. He did call twice on Friday to attempt to meet, but at that point I felt how I felt. If he really gave a fuck about me, this would come first. And she is 100% correct. There is currently a fucking life growing in her belly and you somehow have more important things to do than to go comfort the woman you just impregnated. You should be running, sprinting, to wherever she's at to go give her a fucking hug and say, I'm so sorry. We're going to get through this together. I promise everything's going to be okay. That's what a real man would do. But what is he doing? I don't fucking know. Clearly avoiding responsibilities, avoiding accountability. He has no sense of accountability whatsoever. That's also why he never apologized to Abba and Preach. He apologized to his fans. Myron is Harvey Weinstein. 2.0. And if this isn't proof enough, then you're living in delusion. And you're so far from reality that there is no one, no one's going to save you. Myron is so far gone from reality, no one's going to save him. He's a 30 year old man. And I don't think anyone can help him at this point. Not a therapist, not pills, nothing. Isn't he Muslim? What the fuck? In Islam, men and women are required to dress modestly. Sex is seen as a gift from Allah, and sexual relationships should be restricted to marriage between a man and a woman. Meetings between unmarried couples are traditionally chaperoned. In the Quran, unmarried Muslims are advised against sex before marriage. And here's Myron, already getting girls pregnant, with no ring on their finger. I'm sure Allah would be proud, wouldn't he? This is probably going to be one of my last videos in regards to Fresh and Fit. I originally started going against Fresh and Fit because I noticed how large of a platform they have and how many men listen to them. And I was like, this is not right. (laughs) Um, I'm going to go ahead and start my own podcast and go against everything these men say because I don't agree with any of it. I'm not piggybacking off of them. I'm simply disagreeing with them and telling you why I disagree with them. I'm offering you a perspective from a woman and not these people. And you can either respect it You don't have to like it. You don't like it? Okay, give me a dislike and go. I don't understand why people are so... Like, chill, bro. It's not that deep. I don't know. Let me know if you want me to review or react to any other videos. But, um... Love you all. Thank you so much for uh, 800 subscribers. I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.